Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is that blueberries? Oh, for the pancakes? Right. All right. Hey. Well, it's not bad. It's a lot of it, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're having Dave and Stacy over for breakfast. That's great. Well, then, let's try it again. Good morning. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just, uh, I didn't sleep very well last night. What's on your mind? Oh, it's nothing. I just need to talk to Stacy. Stir. Well, my pleasure. Hands off. <laughs> This had to happen. I can't go. Knock it off. Hello. Hello, Terry. Stacy. Well, hi, Stacy. I was just fixing our breakfast. I don't think I'm going to be able to come. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I should never have said yes and make you go through all the trouble. Well, no, it's no trouble at all. Are you feeling okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. It's, it's just been, been one of those mornings. Well, I understand. <laughs> uh, you know, I honestly think that you do. <laughs> listen, uh, Peter wants to talk to you. No, Terry, I really don't want to talk to anybody. Hey, hey there. You can't make it? No, I'm sorry. Um, Stacy, um, I need to talk to you. Well, maybe later, Peter. It's kind of important. Look, I, I oh, really no. don't... There's somebody at the door. I've got to go. Okay, well, um... She didn't sound too good. Do you feel bad that you're not free to, to comfort Stacy? I mean, that has nothing to do with it. Just don't start laying into Vicky so early in the morning. I wasn't laying into anyone. Just in case. I have an early class this morning, so... You know, the rest of my day's booked up. I had to uh, go. Uh-oh. Hey, uh -uh. I should see her before the class. No, you're going to have breakfast. No, look, friends are more important than food. And mothers are more important than both. True. But, uh, look, you'll be alone with Dave Phillips. I don't want that, Peter. Maybe you planned this all along. That's uh, why. I'm no, here. listen to me. No, listen. Every time that poor man comes over here, he's stuck with me. A meal and excuses. What's so bad about that? Dave. Yeah. Uh, well, I hope the uh, meal's better than the excuses. Good times. I'm sure the company will be better than both. Mr. Webster. Okay, we had an appointment this morning, Stacy. Remember, you made it yesterday. Yeah, I forgot. Sorry. But did something else come up? No, I, I just didn't know I'd be feeling like this when I made the appointment. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be just as brief as I possibly can, though. I, I already turned down a, a breakfast uh, update. I'm going to have to start writing these things down. <laughs> I know just exactly how you feel. Babs has to remind me about stuff all the time. Yeah, but I never used to forget anything. Looks like you've been... Uh... Remembering better times. I, uh, I'm sure you've got a list of questions. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh, and some of them aren't uh, going to be so easy. <laughs> but nothing the DA wouldn't bring up, right? Exactly. <laughs> like, uh, the relationship uh, between your father and mother before she married Lee. 
Mom and Dad were rediscovering their love. You thought they were going to get back together again? I was already planning their second honeymoon. You want to know a secret? That's why I'm here. I'd already opened a second savings account just for their honeymoon. I can't think they'd need the money. Well, Dad did, and he'd be too proud to let Mom pay. But he wouldn't be able to turn down a gift. You know your father really well. I can tell you love him very much. Next question. The love that they were rediscovering wasn't quite enough to bridge the differences between them. It was caused by Amber's pregnancy. Is that right? That's right. I'm sure that hurt Dave a lot. Could you distinguish between the sorrow, the anguish that he felt at losing Kate and whatever his feelings might have been about the fact that Lee ended up with her? Emotions, emotions aren't easy to, to classify. Well, let me just reword that then. Um, do you think that your father resented Lee? He didn't trust him. After the engagement was announced, did your father's attitude or feelings towards your mother change? What do you want to hear, Mr. Webster? That he was, that he was bitter? That he was angry? That he was broken? Well, he was all those things and more. How much more? How intense were those feelings? Well, very. Distracting? Yes, he, he had trouble at the clinic. Relentless? He, he was very much... Why? The next step is obsessed. No. No, he, he still went to work. A and he didn't go back to the bottle. Now, that doesn't sound like a man who's lost control, does it? No. But it doesn't tell us how much longer he can keep control, either. Almost ready. Stacy didn't say why she couldn't make it. Just that it was a tough morning. Maybe Peter will cheer her up. Gee, I was hoping we could all celebrate together. Oh, you mean the news about the mix-up at the clinic? Right. Yeah, well, it won't mean anything in the courtroom, but it sure makes me feel a lot better. So, uh, you told Gene, huh? Mm-hmm. Last night at the party, we were celebrating their newest addition. He said he thought it might prove that you weren't responsible for your actions. <laughs> it's too bad he's a reporter and not the judge. Well, how's the new daughter? Oh, Dave, she is adorable. They named her Alicia. Ah, that's a nice name. Alicia. Children. They are so precious when they're that tiny. Yes, and then they grow up. <laughs> you know, last night I was watching a rerun of the old Jackie Gleason show. I can remember when every Saturday night, Stacy, Amber, and Kevin would climb up on the sofa with me, and we'd all watch and laugh together. <laughs> I tried to explain to them the difference between the actor playing Crazy Guggenheim and the character himself, and they couldn't understand that. So I'd get up and try to uh, impersonate Crazy Guggenheim, but no matter how I acted, I was still daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like a million years ago. It seems like it. You know, my mother used to say, when children are young, they step on your feet. When they grow up, they step on your heart. Speaking hey. of a million years ago, I used to hold her like that. Hey, what? Let me hold him, huh? I'm second. Right I'm third. <laughs> he's gaining weight. He is. I'm so excited. He is. I'm so uh, excited about you. Just think he's Who's about there? to grow right out of his first T-shirt. Only a new mother could be excited hey, about that. So, Dave, what are you doing here? Uh, he is having a private breakfast by default. Right. Peter and Stacy couldn't make it. Oh, I smell something burning. Oh, the pancakes. I've got to go pour some more. Lori, why don't you join us? Oh, no, I can't. I'm just over going over to Dr. Galvin's for a checkup. So I just wanted to drop by and say hi. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm glad you've got Mom to talk to. Well, so am I. Hey, there. Oop, lipstick. No, it doesn't tell us how much longer he could keep control. He was loaded up with a potentially dangerous drug, and he didn't even know it. Stacy, I, I was just asking about Dave's mental state. I know what you were asking. You were asking if my father killed my mother, or if it was even possible. Well, I would like to have your opinion on that, yes. My father isn't capable of such a, a thing. And I hope that ends this interview. You had a brother. Kevin, who was killed in an automobile accident while your father was driving. Yes. And Amber has considered your father a murderer ever since. She was drinking at the time. She, she, she won't let him forget that. He was remorseful? 
Of course. But not enough to please Amber. Nothing short of Dad destroying himself with guilt would please Amber. That's always the, always the way she is with her victories. Like you and Gil. <laughs> Excuse me? Well, I mean, she wanted to destroy you and Gil. I don't, uh, I don't know what this has to do with, with my father's defense. Stacy, when Amber gets on the stand, she's gonna have, she's gonna have a perfect platform for venting her anger, her hatred of Dave. Now, that could be very damaging testimony. <laughs> and, and you might have to remind the court just what kind of person my sister really is. Could you answer that question, please? Uh, um, Gil and I are, are finished. Amber played a part in destroying that relationship. But if you want to know anything else about that, you're going to have to talk to Gil and Amber. Now, I do hope that that's the end of this session. Well, I, I think most of my questions have been answered. I said later. Yeah, look, I had a class in the area, and I just thought... Mr. Webster. Peter, I'm just on my way out the door. How's Vicky? Oh, she's doing fine. It's great. Thanks. Good. That's good. Stacy, I know this is rough on you, <laughs> but we've got to be well prepared. Okay. What could possibly be so urgent that you have to come over here this early? Oh, it's not urgent. No, it's it's about Gil, and I thought you should hear. He's the last person I want to hear about. I think you might change your mind when you hear what he has to say. Are you Gil's special envoy? Oh, no. He didn't ask you to come over? Yes, he did ask me. I told him I wouldn't. <laughs> and now you're here. Mm, he doesn't know. I'm... I'm listening. Stacy, he loves you. He wants you two to get back together. Do you believe that? I think it's possible, yeah. And I think that I'm able to see through Gil when he's lying. What do you believe? What, that, that he wants us to try again? Of course I believe that. It matches his pattern. Oh, consistently inconsistent? No, consistently safe. I don't understand. Oh, come on, Peter. Gil always has the choices. It was Amber or me. He could have married a beautiful woman and started a family, or he could have had me and his freedom. Those options aren't so bad, are they? It was no picnic for him. Oh, come on, Peter. He never had as much to lose. Can't you see that? <laughs> There's no reason for him to stop loving me. What is it costing him? It cost him his child. <laughs> no, that's exactly what it didn't cost him. That's what he wouldn't give up. <sighs> and now he's relieved of all responsibility. Now he's guilt-free. Because he's too stupid to feel guilty about what he did to me. You loved him once, Stacy. Are you saying that you were fooled? I'm... I don't know Stacey, what I'm saying. He was planning to marry Amber. That's... That's a step toward maturity that no one knew he had. And now he's overcome the guilt. And that's more mature than never knowing the guilt. Tell him that the only thing I feel for him is contempt. Like Amber? Why do you keep defending him? I don't know. I said I wasn't going to do that. But I can't stand here and listen to you saying he has nothing to lose. He has you to lose. You mean everything to him. I saw Stacy this morning. How is she? Oh, well, she's fine under the circumstances. Things got a little tense there for a little bit, but uh, I heard what I needed to hear. And Peter showed up. 
Peter talk to Stacy? Oh, I don't know. I guess he did. I left when he got there. <laughs> Why, that little... I guess he changed his mind. Yeah, I hope you don't mind if I change the subject here, but, uh... I have got to know why you lied to Sergeant Brubaker. Well, he told me that uh, you denied seeing Kate the night she was murdered. Yeah, I did, but uh, I told him the truth uh, later that day, all in the same day. The way I heard it, you kind of got tricked into admitting it. Whatever. The truth is out, and I'm not trying to hide anything. Well, why'd you lie in the first place? Mr. Webster, um, there's one thing that I learned from that Canterbury mess I was involved with. It's the power of an accusation. No matter how clearly a man can prove his innocence, it's the finger-pointing that people remember. Oh, I don't know about that. Your business seems to be moving along pretty good here. This business still runs at a deficit. Half the contractors in Kingsley think uh, it's run by a shyster. So Brubaker comes around asking questions that sound to you like accusations, and you lie to him? I'm not saying it was smart. I'm just trying to explain why. So you did see Kate that night. And that's when she told you that Amber had an abortion. If you already know the answers, why bother? Because I don't know all the answers. Where'd you go after you talked to Kate? I went to the castaway. I'd been there earlier with Amber, and she had all the opportunity then to tell me what she'd done. But she wouldn't? After talking to Mrs. Carruthers, I went back to the castaway to see if Amber was there, and she was gone. When was this? Well, I talked to Mrs. Carruthers about 12 o'clock, so however long it took to get back over to the castaway. It takes about 20 minutes. But no Amber, so where'd you go from there? Her other hangouts. She wasn't there either. Look, I've got names of people that saw me. You want them? Then you ended your search? Yeah, about an hour after that. Which left you where? At home. I hit the sack. Uh, I don't know what time it was, but I know it was after one. You live alone? Actually, I lived with Amber, but I went back to my own place because the lease hadn't run out on it yet. Interesting. It's very interesting. But, uh... Not very helpful for you. What do you mean? The autopsy. It showed that uh, Kate was killed between 2 and 3 a.m. Okay. I was at home asleep. And you can't prove it. Ben won't settle out of court. He's convinced he did the right thing. And he's ready to air his convictions for all to hear and he is going to find out just how expensive a platform the courtroom can be, and he's going to drag Kingsley General down with him. This is double jeopardy. We are bending over backwards to pacify that woman out of court. Now we're going to have to face the publicity of a suit anyway because of Ben. What do you suggest we do? Well, for starters, I suggest you bend backwards a little further. I don't follow. This proposal for Nancy. She's going to want twice this much. What do you mean I can't prove that I was home sleeping? You tell me yourself. You lived alone. Well, what do you think I did? Rushed back over to Amber's to shoot her? I, I, mean, I mean, her mother? Gil, I don't have all the pieces here. Matter of fact, I'm just trying to find the holes in the puzzle. Is this the same treatment you gave Stacy this morning? Oh, it's not a treatment. I'm just looking for facts. Why don't you save your theories for the courtroom? Fair enough. Look, Mr. Webster, you don't have a motive for me. I like Kate Phillips. Well, she wasn't real crazy about you. Not in the beginning, but she came around. Well, I wonder what caused that. You taking both of her daughters out at the same time? Because I was marrying Amber, the mother of her first grandchild. Kate Carruthers was a well-known proponent of a woman's right to have an abortion. Yeah, but that wasn't foremost in her mind when she knew it was her own flesh and blood involved. And besides, on the night of the murder, she did me a big favor. I mean, she brought the curtain down on Amber. Why would I kill somebody that had told me the truth? Oh, Peter, what have you... Have you got some kind of a homing device attached to me or something? <laughs> Hey, look, don't leave. I, uh, I want to talk to you. I'm on my way out anyway. Look, uh, I'll probably have to talk to you again. Fine. My door is always open to you. I have nothing to hide. 
Hey, I'm sorry about that. Hey, that's okay. Hey, uh, what'd she say? You ruined my surprise. Well, Webster told me that he saw you over there. Okay, well, she's not gonna come back with open arms. In fact, she might not come back at all. you mean? This isn't enough for Nancy Lawson? Lester, Nancy's attorney makes a living off suits like this. The hospital's attorneys make their living from fending them off. Yeah, well, my guess is Dan makes a better living than your hospital attorneys. Well, now, the word is that Nancy is not as greedy as one might think. Yeah, well, you won't be doing any negotiating with Nancy. You're going to be dealing head-on-head head with Dan Myers. Now, I'm all for you settling out of court on this, but I'm telling you, this is not enough. She didn't want to see me at all? Hey, I didn't say that. She's gone through a lot, man. I know she is, and I want to be with her. Didn't you tell her that? Hey, you better count your blessings. I wasn't even going to go over there, remember? You're right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, what made you change your mind? Vicki. She told you to go over there? No. I just got to thinking about my love for her. And I want that to happen for you and Stacy. You're really something, Davidson. What? Tell me exactly what she said. I don't think you want to hear it word for word. Yeah, you're probably right. Boy, I really need her, though. Off the record? What? I think I saw it in her eyes. I think she still loves you. You should go see her. Now. <laughs> 